When Crisis launched in 2007, it brought every gaming PC in the world to its knees, to the point where even 10 years later we're asking ourselves, when some fancy new graphics card launches, like the RTX 3080, but can it even run Crisis? And the answer these days is a resounding yes, because that was 13 years ago. Or is it? Because on this test bench, I have an advanced copy of Crisis Remastered. Yes, my friends, we're gonna be having a look on both the RTX Titan and NVIDIA's newest flagship at how the original Crisis and the all new Crisis designed to crush even the newest computers will look and run. And this video is brought to you by Origin PC, makers of gaming PCs that quite possibly will be able to run both the old Crisis and the latest Crisis. I don't know what my talking points are. It doesn't really matter. The point is, Origin PC, fast PCs, they're linked in the video description. Naturally, to properly enjoy Crisis in its gorgeous cinematic beauty and likely cinematic frame rate. I'm gonna need the most cinematic setup in my house, my 77 inch LG G10 OLED TV. And something I'm really excited about is by the end of this video, I will have tried for the first time 4K 120 Hertz using HDMI 2.1. The RTX Titan doesn't do it, but the new 3080 does. Wow, so you have this absolutely cranked, eh Nicholas? Very high, all the things, 8x anti-aliasing. Remember when that crushed graphics cards? I do remember when that crushed graphics cards. All right, so load a game uh, recovery? Yeah. All right, let's do it. You know, I, told you it was my new I feel like I'm supposed to say, yeah, this looks so crap now. But even without modding, so this game still looks like pretty decent. You got that depth of field effect. The facial animations and detail are like, not bad. Now those flat rocks, those flat rocks, tessellation is definitely a thing now. These rocks should look better. For those who weren't around at the time, Crisis was built using CryEngine 2, which was an expansion on the already excellent foundation that Crytek built for Far Cry, CryEngine 1. It was the first DirectX 10 compatible game, and it was so technologically advanced at the time that Nvidia ended up using Dino Island, which was built using CryEngine as one of their official benchmarks. The game had over a million lines of code, shipped with a gigabyte of texture data, and came with a level editor called Sandbox that actually allowed you to make changes to your level, just jump in at any time, play test it, and then jump back out and make more changes. I was about to say, you know what's really crazy? Is how much video memory we're sucking back? Four gigs? I mean, when this game came out, graphics cards had what? Like 256 megs, 512 megs of RAM? <laughs> we're only getting like 75 frames per second. Clearly there was some optimization work to be done over the last uh, 13 years here. This is another thing that really blew me away at the time is how much unique foliage there was rather than just like kind of pictures of leaves on the ground. This grass looks so good. Like just how kind of like, I don't know, how varied it is. Like some of it's green, some of it's brown. It kind of sticks up at all different angles. It doesn't look really uniform. Like you get really close and you're like, oh yeah, okay. It's like kind of 2D, but you get even like this distance away from it. You're like, oh yeah, that's grass. While there are a lot of things that still look good, the water, I'd say, is something we've gotten a lot better at over the years. Obviously, we're playing on an absolute monster of a system right now, but a more typical rig at the time would have been something like a uh, Core 2 Quad 6700 with a, you know, 8800 GT graphics card and like two gigs of RAM. To put that in perspective, Graphics cards at the time were lucky to come with 512 megs of onboard memory, running the game at 4K, and we actually had to turn off anti-aliasing in order to get the game a little bit more stable. We were using three and a half gigs of video RAM. It's no wonder that it took years for any system to be worthy. It was actually fun. Like I had a blast playing this game, and Crisis Remastered is one of the few sort of 
remastered games that I'm looking at going like, yeah, I wanna play through this whole darn thing again because this game was a blast. The nano suit game mechanic was a lot of fun, sneaking around behind enemies so they like couldn't see you, uh, popping up behind them, giving them wedgies, that sort of thing. Just pure fun. Okay, it looks proper now. This looks, this looks way better. Like immediately the texture on this rock, like it looks like a rock, not like a, well, you know, not a rock. That effect is way cooler now. <laughs> hey, the rocks are still flat. Come on, you guys. Those are flat rocks. These textures look a lot better though. We're getting like 45 yeah. FPS yeah. and this is only on high. Yeah. The lighting looks way, way more natural. Like they've obviously got some kind of global illumination. I don't think this is real time ray tracing though. It is, it is they use hardware and software. Really? Uh, ray tracing. Huh. It's built into the engine. It, you don't need RT cores though. Oh, fascinating. Where's my God rays at though? Oh, okay. That's a little much. <laughs> that's not God rays. That's like God himself. Looking down on me here. Hey, hey, oh, how are you doing, son? Performance is a little, mm, a little hitchy. There it is. There's a little, there's a little hitchy hitch right there. We're managing 55, 60 FPS though. Yeah, 55, 60. Wow, that looks better. I wonder how much they ended up reusing versus redoing. They've reused a lot of stuff. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure that bullet splash effect is reused. Most of the geometry is the same as well. This yeah. texture is obviously updated. Yeah. That looks way better. Oh, let's uh, let's shoot a tree. That physics looks repurposed. To be clear, it's not terrible. It's probably still better than what you'll see in some other games, like even modern ones. This mountain was just like a blob before. The draw distance is way better. Like these islands out here look all like detailed and stuff. That's pretty cool. You can tell we're working with an early build of the remaster game though, just with the little bits of like hitching that we're seeing. What I'm a little worried about though, is if this is high, what happens if we put it in can it run crisis mode? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Back in game, restart checkpoint. Here we go. Whoa! That is some, wow, that is some slideshow right there, boys. The, the muzzle flash is not even attached to the muzzle anymore. Who needs it? Oh, I don't have a lot of FPS right now. Uh, okay, maximum, we need more strength. Oh, there's a missile launcher, hello. See you later! <laughs> wow, so what is this? 22 FPS right now. 22 FPS. And this is on an RTX Titan. We are, to be fair, also recording on there. That's true, we are also recording on our poor RTX Titan. Can we, uh, should we upgrade to the 3080 now? Yeah. I think it's time. 32 FPS. I think RTX 3080 can run Crisis. I mean, it. It's a little glitchy. <laughs> I wouldn't describe it as a perfect experience. Hilariously enough, the like 25 if FPS that we're getting, that's actually very similar to the frame rate of the original Crisis when it was released on console. Neat, huh? <laughs> Hi. See you later. <laughs> See you later. Oh, just raw fun. I love it. Of course, all that new technology they baked in the game doesn't come without a cost. So they added up to 8K textures, uh, screen space reflections, screen space shadows, uh, global illumination, temporal anti-aliasing, screen space directional occlusion, depth of field, new light settings, and HDR support. So what I wanna try next is turning it to settings that aren't completely stupid and then enabling HDR and seeing if we can actually enjoy the game. <laughs> HDR time, boys. Oh boy. Well, 
That's a crying shame. Remember, of course, this is an earlier build of the game. Uh, this is not quite release software. Like, some stuff looks fine, but then anywhere the sun's hitting, it's like, ugh. Maybe that was their intent, but it doesn't come across very good. And this whole blue thing they've got going on with distant stuff, it that does not work. Uh, brightness? I don't know. What if we turn the brightness down? Well, here, let's see what we did so far. Whoa, okay. I don't know how much of this to blame on RTX 3080 not having like a game ready driver yet and how much of this to blame on this game not being completely finished yet. All that's left for now then is to talk about the upcoming DLSS patch. So hopefully we'll actually be able to run it 4K or even greater resolutions without glitching as well as the upcoming benchmark mode that'll allow you to use Can It Run Crisis as a benchmark for realsies with all kinds of uh, additional analytics and tools built into the benchmark. So we are around here anyway, jazzed, because it gives us something to test, not just RTX 3000, but even future generations of graphics cards on. As long as the glitchiness gets a little bit better. Oh, come on, and the AI chills out with the grenades. That wasn't even a grenade, that was just me not being very good at this. What's in your online security toolkit? Adding a VPN lets you mask your IP and encrypt traffic to and from your devices. Private internet access has reliable service with over 3,000 servers in more than 30 countries. They've got no bandwidth caps and their encryption is configurable, keeping you in control of your connection. When combined with private browsing best practices, a VPN can even make websites think that you're in a different country. Try PIA risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. You can connect up to 10 devices at once with clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. We're gonna have it linked down below. Don't wait, sign up today. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe check out the one where we ran the original Crisis on a 64-core CPU without any graphics card at all. Pretty cool stuff.